Ooh, good evening, Periscope. As always, bang on time. Not as always at all, but nine o'clock tonight. We are on time. How is everybody? Hope you are having an amazing day. The hipster is here straight away. Big up the hipster. A member, a new uh, a new recruit for Bulletproof Actor, Unstoppable Confidence, Infinite Success, Simon Hibster. Simon Hibbs, we're gonna make sure, my man, you have the best 2017 of your life. Uh, Border Region TV, they've joined. Excellent. <laughs> Jen Roberts, good evening. How are you? Uh, for those who are brand new or for those who are watching this on the replay, good evening. My name is Ross. I'm an actor and a voiceover artist from Manchester in the UK. Lucy, good evening. Good to see you here. I've seen you for a while. Um, and I scope twice a week, once on a Monday night, which is tonight. We do something called Motivation and Mind Hacks, which um, is exactly that. It is literally hacks that you can implement into your life um, to hack your mind for more motivation, more productivity, you know, more inspiration, to get more done, to get further in your life faster. Gary Thomas, another Bulletproof Actor recruit, good evening, thanks so much for being here. Um, and then on a Wednesday night we do a book club, we're looking at an awesome book at the moment for November, Who Moved My Cheese? Absolutely fantastic book. If you've uh, not read this book, Dr. Spencer Johnson's book, with a foreword by Kenneth Blanchard, PhD. Um, join us on Wednesday, it's a wicked book. Although actually for this Wednesday, we might be doing this something slightly different to celebrate um, and give you guys extra value because I have brought out a brand new, well, it's the second time it's come out, um, my flagship mindset program, um, high performance science back positive psychology mindset coaching program called Bulletproof Actor. Like I said, Gary and Simon, who I've seen tonight, are already on board. There's three days left to enroll. If you want to literally transform your success um, through science back positive psychology, no woo woo bullshit, this is all implementable, execut executable strategies that literally will take your life to the next level and beyond. I promise you, it did that for 51 actors who went through it in February. It's going to do it again for the actors who are going through it right now. You've got till Thursday at midnight in order to enroll. But to celebrate that on Wednesday night, instead of book club, guys, I think what I might do is a webinar on high performance, completely, you know, content focused, completely free for you guys. It's looking good so far, says Gary Thomas. Honest to God, Gary, I watched some of the videos back today, it's some of the lessons, because I had to in order to comment on the comments that were coming through. It, it, it's me watching myself, but it motivates the shit out of me. Just watching, just watching the videos, it's ridiculous. Here, here, says the hipster. Um, it works. If I've seen these videos hundreds of times, guys, and if I sit there and watch these lessons and the strategies that I'm teaching and I get pumped by them, trust me, it's powerful stuff. And so we might do a webinar on Wednesday night, uh, which is all high performance based, um, in order to kind of give people a peek of what that program is like. Um, you know, and then um, I might get some, some bonuses available on the webinar to those who sign up on the webinar. They'll all be available to those people who have already signed up, though, don't worry about that. And um, so tonight, I'm not planned tonight, guys, because I'm going to riff a little bit because I've just got off a call, literally had an hour Skype call with a mentor of mine. I bang on all the time about the power of mentors. Good evening, Helen Kent. Amazing to see you here. Uh, let us know where you are viewing from. And I bang on about the importance of mentors all the time. And I mean in all areas of your life. Sometimes people think they only, you know, mentors only exist in business or something like that. Mentors should exist in your life in as many areas of your life as is, uh, you know, as is humanly possible. Uh, so whether that is in your physicality, whether it's in your finances, your relationships, your acting career, your spirituality, all these kind of things. Who is your current mentor, Ross? I've got loads, Fanny, absolutely loads. So in my business right now, one of the uh, so incredibly grateful as I'm in my life um, is a guy called Jeff Walker, who is one of the greatest marketers, branding guys, launch marketers in the world. The guy um, has, well, himself has made tens of millions of dollars um, held to the people to do the same, but more importantly, has had such a massively positive impact on the world, helping other people to effectively help other people. Uh, Tommy Phillips, good evening. Um, so that's uh, so Jeff's a mentor in in business. I, in terms of um, my mindset, so I have Mark, a guy called Mark Dharma. He's a high performance coach in LA. Great friend of mine. He's become a great friend of mine over the years. He is a guy who I actually discuss and explain his life story in Bulletproof Actor, Unstoppable Confidence, Infinite Success, because he changed my life massively eight years ago through one conversation, and I explain all about that and my old limiting bullshit life story that I was living eight years ago, 
and how we transform everything around. That was thanks to Mark. Mark now coaches some of the greatest entrepreneurs, musicians, actors in Hollywood. Um, I did a Skype call with him recently. He had Rita Ora around his house, and you know he, he's coaching her on physicality because he's jacked as well. The guy is he's massive. He got me into into health and fitness as well. Um, so I have him. There's another guy called Luis Diaz who does a podcast called Ask the Ab Guy. Um, I've actually got him on board this um, intake of Bulletproof Actor to coach the the guys who enroll in the course in their high performance physicality as well. I looked up someone I did work experience with years ago yesterday, thinking of email there. Gary, you must, you absolutely must. And then in my acting career, there's a lot of casting writers I know who, you know, who ask for mentorship. Other actors um, who are, um, sorry, I didn't quite see your guns there. There you go, funny. A bit more. Um, other actors who are having more success than me, you know. So I looked up. I look. Ultimately, guys, this is what it is. Your mentor should be having more success than you. Okay. It doesn't mean they're a better person than you doesn't mean that they are any better in any way than you, but they are having more success because generally they've probably got more rituals than you, higher quality rituals. They've got you know, into a mindset where they're making higher quality decisions. They're saying no to a lot of the shit that a lot of people say yes to that, det- that completely distracts them from what they should be doing. Ask yourself that today. Have you said yes to somebody else and inadvertently ended up saying no to yourself? Because these guys give me a load of shit when I do that because they hold me accountable and I'm very much naturally the yes man who will be, I will help you because I I love helping people, you know, sometimes to my own detriment, okay? And sometimes you've got to politely say no to people, okay? Because if you don't, then your well is drained and you have nothing left to give everybody else if one person is draining you. So your mentors should be more successful than you And they should also um, see more potential in you than you probably see in yourself, okay? Because we all fucking doubt ourselves, don't we? Regardless of how tuned in you are to high performance, whatever level you are at, as I say in the Bulletproof Actor program, you've always got another level above that and a level above that and a level above that. And even if you are a millionaire or billionaire, you're still going to have fears about doing things that are out of your comfort zone because if you, you know, if you are doing what you've already done, or doing what you've always done. You're only ever gonna have what you've always had. If you want more than that, you've gotta do things that you've never done before. And that's where we shit our pants sometimes and we just back away from it. And that's why we stay in our comfort zones and we don't grow. And um, so we were bang on about how, how you know important mentors are. And I've just had a chat, yeah, with Jeff. So Jeff's this amazing marketer. Absolutely this amazing guy. He lives in a huge kind of like log cabin thing. He's built himself up in the mountains in Colorado. I'm actually halfway through a life coaching course, as in becoming one. Well, that's unbelievable. That's amazing. You know, absolutely. You'll learn so much about yourself by doing something like that as well, Fanny. Um, and what you'll end up, this is amazing. If you do something like that, but you've got to commit to it. Don't dabble in this. If you want to do that, you commit to that like you would commit to your acting career. Um, I'm a big fan of people doing more than one thing. I don't think you should limit yourself necessarily in the world. It's only my opinion and it's controversial because I know there's a lot of people out there who will go, no, if you want to be a successful actor, you commit just to that and that's all you do. I think that's living a slightly limiting life because I think you can be good and great and master more than one thing, okay? I think you can do at least two or three things that you are a master of that probably feed into each other as well. If you become a better, if you become a life coach and you understand the human condition more, you're going to understand acting more. Uh, I finished my sports nutrition diploma next week too. Bloody hell, Fanny. She's on it. She's just doing a million things. Focus on uh, on one of them at a time, though. I would say, you know, if you you can master various things, absolutely. But I would focus. Don't spread your focus too thin. Uh, but yeah, Jeff lives in this in this amazing place. He's built himself in, in Colorado, and we were talking tonight. The topic we were talking about was how kind of the science behind success isn't always congruent or logical with how the average person would think. It is. So I want to explain this to you guys tonight, and it's quite simple to explain, but you must understand this, um, and it's going to affect the way you live the next eight weeks of your life. Yes, definitely. We're surprised when I wrote my book, how easy it felt compared to screenplays. Gary's smashing out books left, right, and center. Amazing. So 
firstly guys, I want you to understand that the next eight weeks of your life are absolutely the golden weeks of the year. These are now, for me, the most exciting eight weeks of the year, okay? One, because it's nearly Christmas, and I love Christmas. But more importantly, guys, this is how it is, and I've said this in a few emails that I've sent out to the group this week, okay? The sheep and the losers in this industry, the acting industry, or any industry you are in, are all on wind down right now. The last eight weeks of the year are the eight weeks of the year where the losers, the guys who suck at life or anything else, are on complete wind down. They're going out more often now, they're partying, they're getting drunk, they're getting fat, and they're putting off becoming a better version of themselves until January, okay? I guarantee you, your friends will be telling you, oh yeah, I'm gonna lose weight in January. Oh yeah, I'm gonna uh, you know I'm gonna uh, subscribe to that thing in January. Oh yeah, I might I have to get some new headshots taken in January. I might get a showreel scene shot in January. Bullshit. The last eight weeks of the year are the easiest eight weeks to procrastinate on. And for you, if you are a winner and someone who has a high performance mindset, you need to use these next eight weeks to get ahead of all of the sheep. Miss Gypsy, all the way from the States, good evening, and another uh, registrant on uh, Bulletproof Factor Unstoppable Confidence Infinite Success. So great to have you in the program, Miss Gypsy. You and Gary, who's on tonight, are both writers. Um, so you've got that in common, okay? Because, um, like I said, the program's called Bulletproof Actor. However, it might as well be called Bulletproof Writer, or Bulletproof Plumber, or Bulletproof Racing Car Driver, or whatever job you do, because it applies to anyone who's human. Um, so yeah, the next eight weeks are crucial for you to get ahead of the sheep. So Fanny, I know you're a massive action taker because I see you post all the things that you're doing on the Facebook group. Um, so you've got these eight weeks where you can choose to let's relax and stop taking this massive action or you can continue to keep your foot on the gas until, I, I tell everybody, until the third week in December. So Bulletproof Factor, the live coaching version of it doesn't finish on the 15th of December by accident, guys. It was very strategically planned. So the first live call is the 17th of November. You get one every Thursday for five weeks until the 15th of December. And the idea behind that is we use the weeks now leading up to the new year, well, leading up to Christmas, to get you guys into a peak state, get you guys you know, with a solid belief system about yourself. It's not gonna be completely finished. The work you do on this program is gonna continue for the rest of your life. But this five weeks foundation of all of it is gonna get you to a great place and we'll have an amazing last life call on the 15th of December. You're gonna go into Christmas and New Year feeling fantastic, okay? And then you're gonna know you've done the groundwork to enjoy yourself over Christmas and New Year. You're not gonna feel guilty about having those two weeks off because you ain't just had the last six weeks before that off like all the fucking sheep have done. So you're gonna go into the Christmas and New Year feeling great and you're gonna be starting from a sprinting start in January. Come January the 2nd when it's like, right, New Year's done, let's go, let's get ready to rock. You guys are gonna have the foundation of a winner. You're gonna have a, the champion's mindset, guys, okay? And you're gonna start from a, from a sprinting start. The losers and the sheep are gonna be hung over at hell, fat, they're going to be like, you know, thinking about joining a gym or thinking about buying this or thinking about doing a showery or going, I now can't have my headshots done for another three months because I've got to lose some weight and don't want to look like shit on my pictures. You don't want to do that, okay. Now, the other thing that we and Jeff have been talking about, you need to notice, Fanny says lol, you need to realise as well, is sometimes the route to success is not logical. And it seems sometimes completely incongruent and backwards. Okay, so I'll give you an example of this. Some people think, I will, I will go to the gym when I feel motivated. Okay, not, not realizing that if they, in order to get motivated, they should go to the gym. So it's not, it's not the motivation that comes first to get them to the gym. It's actually the gym that comes first to get them motivated. Okay, yes, says Fanny. 
So in business, for instance, right, I've had people this week, Bulletproof Actor guys, I know I keep banging on about this, but I feel that if I don't, I'm doing you a disservice, okay? The program, the VIP version is 279 pounds for a full 33 video, five hour program and five full weeks of live coaching plus two live webinars with some of the, the best high performance coaches in the world, a podcast and a mastermind group of all the people that are doing it. It's an ab absolute steal. Seriously, if I was putting this program out into the wider world, not for actors who I know have a negative relationship with cash, the program would at least be 997. It wouldn't be 279. It's an absolute steal. And sometimes I think putting out that price might affect people's perception of value about it. Maybe they think it's not as valuable as it should be. You know, maybe if I put it out for a higher price, people would respect it a bit more, but I want to make it as accessible as possible. I think I've just had Someone else has signed up for it, by the way, whilst we're on the call. Bill Bradshaw, big shout out to you, who's just signed up for the program. There is Bill, look at that. So, Bill's just paid his 279 for the program. Well done, Bill. He's gonna have the best 2017 of his life. What a lot of people have done this week is they've emailed me and they've gone, I'll do that program when I have 279 pounds to spare. Not realizing that until they invest in a program like that, it doesn't have to be this one, they will probably never have 279 pounds to spare because they will always have the mindset they have now, one of scarcity, okay, one where they feel there is a finite amount of success out there and a finite amount of money. You know, They feel that there is a right time to do something and maybe now isn't the right time. There is never, give me some hearts if you, if you truly believe in this, there is never a right time to do anything. You can always find something to talk yourself out of doing that thing. All the hearts are coming through. And that's because fear, guys, masquerades itself so often as practicality. I will do that when I am not doing this. I'll do that when this isn't happening. I'll do that when I have more time. I'll do that when I have more money. I'll do that when I have more of this, more of that. Bullshit. You don't realize that you won't have more of whatever that thing is that you're looking for until you do the thing you are putting off. You know, if I go into the gym and go, I'll, I'll lift those, I'll, I'll bicep curl those 25 kilogram dumbbells when I've got bigger arms. It's fucking bullshit. I don't get bigger arms until I start curling or trying to curl those 25 kilogram dumbbells. Okay, so it seems incongruent and backwards. Bill Bradshaw, who I've just been talking about, Bill, I just saw your sign up come through, my man, for Bulletproof Actor has just joined the scope. Congrats, Bill. Seriously, mate, you're going to have the best five weeks of your life and we're going to absolutely sort out so that we smash 2017 for you. I reached out to you today in desperation, says Miss Gypsy. Well, Miss Gypsy, you reached out, you've enrolled and we're going to make sure that you have your best 2017 as well. So what you did there is you didn't go, I'm going to reach out to Ross where I feel I'm in a good place to do this course. You went, in order to be in a good place, I've got to reach out first. And this is what I just want people to understand. It's very often it's not logical. I get it why people think it's that way, but it doesn't work that way. You very often have to do the thing you are making an excuse not to do in order to get past the excuse you are making not to do it. So for me, I'll let you into, I'm totally, totally transparent with, with all of my business stuff and finance and all that kind of stuff. So. To launch Bulletproof Actor, I had no idea how marketing for a launch worked. And I wanted to put myself out there as the authority in positive psychology in the acting industry that I knew I had the credentials to back up. I, I totally believe in what I do. I'm 100% authentic. I know what I preach works because I've implemented, implemented it into my life over the last decade. But I had no clue about marketing, guys, because I'm not a marketer. I'm an actor and I'm a bit of a geek when it comes to technology and you know, and I can talk to a camera, but I didn't know how I would market a product. So I didn't think to myself, okay, well I'll put this product out um, you know, uh, when I am an expert on marketing. I was like, well one, in order to become an expert on marketing, I'm gonna have to make a product and put it out there because I've got to learn by probably getting it wrong initially. And I came up for a course by Jeff, who's the guy I just spoke to on Skype, that was $4,000. Okay, and this was back in December 2015. Now $4,000 for a course that's just online, like Bulletproof Actor, that's a lot of money. I'm not asking for, you know, he wasn't asking for 279 quid. 
He's asking for £3,000, over 10 times that amount. But I thought, you know what, in order for me to get to the level I want to get when it comes to putting my stuff out there and getting eyeballs on it because I know the positive impact it can have, I'm going to have to do something I haven't done before, otherwise I'm going to have what I've always had, which wasn't enough for me. I didn't think I'll drop that $4,000 when my business can afford it, okay, because my business couldn't afford it. My personal life, thank God, in terms of my acting and my voiceover, could subsidize my business. You know, but my business didn't have four thousand dollars spare to drop on a program. But I couldn't think to myself, I'll buy that program when the business can afford it, because I knew for my business to be able to afford it, I needed to buy that program, because that was going to teach me how to get my products out there, and it did. And I recouped that money and a lot more when I first launched Bulletproof Factor back in February. Now, not only did I make that money back, I learned a shed load and I impacted positively 51 people's lives that will never be the same again because they did that program in a good way. I got better at that, I learned marketing. This time, the program will impact more people's lives. We should get a bigger enrollment because my marketing this time is better from what I learned before. But had I not dropped that $4,000 on that program, I would still be in the same position today and none of you guys on the scope would, would, be, would be going through Bulletproof Factor because it wouldn't exist. Because I'd have been like, still, I don't have $4,000 spare to drop on that and I never would have got to the point where I did because um, I wasn't taking the action that was required of me. So it sounds backwards, but do you get it? Do you kind of understand? Over the next eight weeks, like I say, you've got a golden opportunity now to do some things you have never done before in order for 2017 to bring you things you have never had before, okay? So you've got eight weeks to set up a foundation to do some shit you've never done before. Bill phoned me before and he knew he needed to do something. He's like, I feel like I'm stuck in a rut and need to do something. He's a super talented actor, Bill. He's got potential to be a great voiceover artist as well, but hasn't been taking the action that's congruent with his talent and what he wants. So he's procrastinated a lot and he's got some rituals in his life that aren't super positive. Staying up late, like I used to do, staying up late, getting up late. Now I don't stay up late, I get up at six and I'm in the gym and smashing it out and I feel better than I've ever felt before. Um, previously, I said to myself, oh, I'll go to the gym in the morning when I'm a morning person. Not realizing that until I started going to the gym in the morning would I become a morning person. <laughs> Again, it was backwards. I needed to start doing the thing I was afraid of in order to become the thing I needed to be in order to do the thing I was afraid of, if you know what I mean. Thanks for the kind words, mate, says Bill. Pleasure, Bill. Uh, I believe in you, man. My job is to believe in you more than you believe in yourself. Genuinely is. I don't take your investment in me or the program lightly, mate. I will seriously over deliver the shit out of this program to get you to where you want to be if you give me your commitment. If you don't, I can't help you. Uh, silence of the VIP course just now. I know my man, I saw you. We, we made, we made, I saw you come through on my phone and we made a little shout out to you before you even jumped on the scope. Um, but yeah, so it's incongruent, in terms of the thing you want to get is incongruent with the way most people think they've got to get it. Okay, so do you get that? Give me some hearts, give me some comments if you understand that. And think over the next eight weeks, what you can do you haven't done before in order to get what you've never had before. And it doesn't have to be. I know I bang on about Bulletproof Factor and I will do until registration closes on Thursday because I know the more people I can bring into this program, the more lives I can change. And ultimately, the more lives you can change through doing the program because there will be a ripple effect. The beautiful thing about things like this is when you become better, you can pass those gifts that you've learned on to other people. And what you'll find in this program, and Fanny, what you'll find if you do this life coaching stuff you're doing, ironically, but it's an amazing feeling, is you become the person in the end, who you needed in your life at the beginning. And it's a beautiful thing to recognize and go, you know what, a few years ago when I was lost, I needed the person I now am in my life. Yes, I hear everything you say in the course, says, uh, says Fanny. Um, yeah, you end up going, you know what, I'm now the person I wish I knew all those years ago when I was really struggling with this kind of thing. And it's amazing, but you can pass those gifts on to other people then and you see other people evolve. It's the most rewarding thing in the world. It's way more rewarding than any money or any job or anything like that when you impact the core of somebody's life and then see them to go on and do the same for other people. Um, so think about the things that you can do or haven't done or have been putting off this year because you've been waiting for the right time, which will never come. I promise you, it'll never come. There'll always be something. 
that is hanging over you that you just need to finish before you do that thing and then there'll be something else and then there'll be something else and you'll never do it. You will never ever do it. I put off doing marathons for a year with that very thing. Oh, I'll do, I'll do a marathon when I've got more time to train at night or I'll do a marathon uh, you know, when I've been in the gym a bit longer. It's nonsense. For me to complete a marathon, I just needed to start running. Dead simple, you know, that's all I needed to do. <laughs> Um, and then I got to a point where I can just run for fun now and it's genuinely enjoyable and it's brilliant. When I first started off it wasn't at all, but you know, I didn't say I'll, I'll run a marathon when I enjoy running. I needed to start running in order to enjoy running. And to think about what you can do um, and just set yourself a goal or two goals. I'm going to do a lot more stuff on goal setting towards the end of the year guys and if you want to know more about that, jump on some of these scopes in mid-December. Um, because I'm gonna, you know, I won't be having a couple of weeks off for Christmas on these scopes. We'll still be doing this every Monday and Wednesday, even if it falls on Boxing Day or whatever, and there's one person watching. I'll be here delivering some stuff to you guys. Um, it's part of a ritual, you know, of what I demand from myself now. Um, but yeah, we're gonna do some stuff on goal setting because it's super, super important. People have been asking about it in the Facebook group. Um, and there's a very specific way to go about goal setting that I don't think many people understand. Uh, when are you putting that book out, A Letter to Younger Self? The first week of January. I wanted to do it for a New Year inspiration thing, Fanny. Um, there's still time to get your letter in because of that. If you, if you, we did a thing a few weeks ago called A Letter to My 16-Year-Old Self where you, we, I got people to write a letter to their 16-year-old selves giving advice based on what they now know. It doesn't matter if you're 17 or if you're 70. You, know, you will have advice for your, your former self that you wish you'd have known at the time. Some can be fun, some can be profound, it doesn't have to be long, you know, I said like 500 words max, Fanny wrote a novel, but I'm going to publish it, Fanny. <laughs> uh, but yeah, if you go to actonlist.tv forward slash dear16, so it's D-E-A-R-1-6, so the numbers, actonlist.tv forward slash dear16, there's a form on there you can submit. Write yourself a stream of consciousness, a letter to your 16 year old self. I'm going to publish them in a free ebook to start off the new year to kind of give people uh, a bit of motivation and inspiration uh, in order to have the best year ever. I say this all the time, but I want people to make 2017 their best year ever. If you feel right now that you're no longer, no further along than you were in, in this time last year, something's got to change. And it's generally not, it's generally not your environment or your situation or, or any external factors. It's generally you. You need to change. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be a massive change. It could be a little tweak that just sends you off in a slightly different direction. You end up in a very different destination after going for a long time in that in that slightly different direction. Um, but something's got to change. And like I say before, do what you've always done. You're gonna have to settle for having what you've always had. Simple as that. Do what you haven't done before and you set yourself up for a situation where you may have something you've never had before. Okay, so uh, we want lots of that in 2017. Um, but ultimately, guys, yeah, that's a little bit of a riff that I wanted to give you tonight on those two things. One, to recap, the next eight weeks of the year, your most important weeks of the year, they can either set you up for success next year or they can set you up for a really slow start and potential failure for next year, okay? If you've never looked at the last eight weeks of the year in this way before, try it, it will transform your life, okay? Um, the other thing was, yeah, the way you get what you want is very often not the way it logically seems. Sometimes you've got to do the thing that you're using as an excuse in order to have the thing that you want. You know, so like I say, you know, I'll go to the gym when I'm motivated. No, you need to go to the gym to become motivated. It seems completely backwards, but that's the way that it works. I wish people would understand that more because they'd get a shit ton more done in their life. Uh, and then the third thing is, yeah, there's still three days left. Well, no, there's not. After today, there's nearly only two days left. We've got Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Yeah, so three days. Uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday left to get on board Bulletproof Factor, Unstoppable Confidence, Infinite Success. It's a five-week program if you do the VIP one, where you get five live coaching calls with me every Thursday from the 17th of November all the way through to the 15th of December. It will set you up for exactly what I've been talking about tonight. Um, get yourself over to bulletproofactor.com to learn all about it. You'll see a video on there where I explain every single unit. You'll see some testimonials from people who did it in February, from actors who are brand new to the industry, right up to actors who are working in Hollywood on big shows. Everyone's got their next level, regardless of who you are. Everyone has their next level. So this stuff applies to everybody. The doors will be closing firmly 
at midnight on Thursday. They will not open again, even if people, I promise you, I'm, I absolutely promise you, I'm a complete, utter man of my word, this is not money driven. If you email me at quarter past 12, saying, oh, I didn't get in, if it's not for like literally a life and death excuse, like I was in hospital with appendicitis, or whatever it is, I can't let you in, okay? I'm all about people taking action. If you're not prepared, to take the action. Unfortunately, you're not ready to do the course. I don't want people dabbling in this. People commit to it. They commit to the group because it's important. It's not just you on the program. There's a whole group of people. There's around 30, 35 people subscribed already. I expect there to be 50 to 60 by the time uh, the, the registration closes. You're committing to the group. We're going to hold you accountable. We're going to get you out of your comfort zone. We're going to get you breaking through and smashing through a lot of the limiting bullshit in your life that stopped you from being more than you already are. You know, we're going to celebrate each other's successes. We're going to support each other. We're going to, you know, share information. We're not going to hoard anything, which a lot of actors do. And we're going to make sure that each and every one of us has the best year ever in 2017. If it sounds like you and you want to become part of that tribe, like I say, get over bulletproofactor.com can't wait to welcome you to the group. If you've got any questions, email me ross at bulletproofactor.com and I'll answer those. And last thing, yeah, I'm going to do a webinar on Wednesday night for free. I think it's going to be called something like four factors, four factors that are killing your acting career right now that you probably know nothing about. I think it'll be four things that, not just killing your acting career, you know, killing success in general. Um, and I'm going to do a presentation probably for 60 minutes on that and then we'll do 30 minutes of Q&A about the program, about Bulletproof Factor if people want to learn more about that. So join me for that, that'd be awesome. If you're not part of the Facebook group and you're watching on the replay, come and join facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash act on this TV. Um, and uh, yeah, I can't wait to work with the people who've already signed up. Anyone got any questions now? Let's just hang out for a minute or anything. Let's talk about anything. It doesn't have to be anything to do with this. Let's just chat. Uh, is that still at 9 p.m.? It will be at 7.30 on Wednesday, I think, Fanny. I'm going to send emails out to everyone and I'm going to post it in the Facebook group as well. Will it be available on replay? So the webinar itself will be available um, until, well because it's to, it'll all tie in with the Bulletproof Factor launch, it will be available on Thursday. I'll send it out to the email list again, I'll post it in the Facebook group, but it will come down when registration closes for Bulletproof Factor because it will no longer be relevant for the stuff I'm talking about at the end of the webinar. Um, so, uh, so yeah, if you can't make it live, there's register for it initially when I put the, I'll put a link out tomorrow with the registration form, you put your name, your email on it, then you're guaranteed a place because there's only a limited amount of people I can have on the software at a time. Um, and then if you can't make it, that's fine, I'll email you as long as you've registered for it, a link to the replay the next day. But then if you don't watch it the next day, it will be gone. If you click the link the day after that, it'll lead to a page that says, sorry, you know, time's out. Um, so it will be if you can't make it, but that'll be 7.30 p.m on Wednesday and it will take place instead of the book club. Uh, we'll catch up on the book club on uh, who's made my cheese the week after. I don't know if I registered. You haven't, Fanny, because no one has yet. No one's registered yet because um, I've not put a page out, so, <laughs> so don't worry about it. The page will be going live tomorrow and um, I'll send any, everyone who's on the email list for Act On This TV or if you, if you subscribe to Bulletproof Factor or you've got the free Bulletproof Factor videos I put out a couple of weeks ago, you'll be on the email list as long as you've not unsubscribed from that. I'll send you all a link tomorrow and I'll put it in the Facebook group as well. So keep an eye out there, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash act on this TV. Any other news? Anyone else got anything else to uh, to say? Let me know. I've just had a little bit of a bit of a salty rant tonight, but I just feel hugely passionate about it. I'm very interested in goal setting as I know they work. I have problems doing that for myself. Well, hipster, what great, great thing you've signed up to Bulletproof Factor. So on the live calls, mate, if that's something you want to look at, because what we do on the live calls is we'll go through a unit. So there's five units in the program. We'll go through a unit. Um, I expect people to have finished that unit we're going to talk about before the live call. So before the 17th of November, you only need to have finished unit one. Before the 24th, you need to finish unit two, and so on and so on until unit five. It does get progressively more work to do as we go through the units though. Unit one is pretty short, so is unit two. It gets a bit more serious, three. Four is deep. Five is very deep. <laughs> Okay, four and five are the big ones, um, but I need you to finish those by the time we get on the call, or at least be very much through them. But then once we've talked about that, we'll do a uh, you know a Q&A on anything at the end. If you want to talk about goal setting, pipe up and we'll talk about goal setting. Working on unit one earlier today, awesome. Gary, yeah, I've seen, uh, I've seen quite a lot of the comments on that. 
Um, unit 1 will set you up guys for life, literally, and then it just gets better from there on. We can hold each other accountable, absolutely Karen, that's exactly what it's about. Um, because also, you know, sometimes people on the last on the last intake buddied up with someone else, you don't have to do that. And I leave that up to you guys in the group to do, it's not something I arrange and go, right Karen, you're going to go with Simon and you're going to do this. You choose your, your own people if you want to do that, or you can choose a group of two or three or four or whatever. Uh, but it's really, really good. Completely irrelevant, I'm writing a new rap. Brilliant. Fanny's actually a really good rapper. <laughs> Fanny posted a rap in the Facebook group. Fanny, it was dark. It was pretty dark, but it was, you know, it was good. Honestly, you know, it was better than Honey G. And look what Honey G's doing. Honey G's killing it right now on X Factor. Um, so yeah, write a rap, that's fine. If you want to do a rap, post it up. We'll critique it for you. Um, see, see how far you've come since your first rap. But yeah, I was surprised. Pretty good though. Um, anything else for anything else, guys, before we, we call it a day? 25 to 10. Been on for 35 minutes. Um, let me know if there's anything I can help you with or anything you're wondering about, whether it's to do with the course or not, in life, or anything at all. I'm just super pumped tonight. I had that call with Jeff super hyped and I've been drinking coffee I'm prepared for anything any questions <laughs> anything based on your life high performance success mindset blockages shit that's going wrong things are going right let's celebrate those anything at all it's all gone very quiet on the Western front here unless people are writing in depth in depth comments um, Let's have a look. What was Jeff's name? Jeff Walker, Gary. An absolutely brilliant, brilliant man. Uh, Jeff with a J. J-E-F-F-W-A-L-K-E-R. Jeff Walker. Um, if you're into business and marketing, the guy's a legend. If you don't get taken on by voiceover agent, Ross, what do you suggest the next best step? Okay, so what you've got to do, first of all, Fanny, is don't think the be all and end all is voiceover agents because it's not. few things you can do. Ultimately, to get a voiceover agent, you could do with having some credits, like you can in acting or anything like that. Bill says, what do you think about the pedestrianisation of Norwich City Centre? That's a um, that's an Alan Partridge quote. I think it gives much better access to the D -D Dixons, Bill. So, Fanny, yeah, what you can do is you need to start ultimately getting your voice out as you would get your face out in as many places as possible. So I would start with some sites that you can apply for your own work on. Things like Voices Pro, Voices123, VoiceBunny.com, places like that, and then you... It's labour intensive because you've got to bid for work effectively. They put these briefs out. Sometimes they'll say, can you record me a one minute demo of this? And you submit it and then they choose from those demos who they want to record it. It can be hard work. I get it completely. It's not the best paid work, but ultimately if you can get paid anything to do something you want to get better at, is that not a win? Because in life, most of the time, we have to pay to get better at something. We have to pay these people. Someone's going to pay you to get a bit better at it. That's brilliant. Did you get a voiceover agent straight away? I did, unfortunately, Fanny. So I don't have an awful lot of... Um, an awful lot... Uh, I'll say those again, Bill, in a second, the size. Yeah, I didn't have an awful lot of uh, kind of time in my life where I was having to do this. But there was a few weeks, actually. I actually... This was back in the day. So this is 12 years ago when websites were dreadful. I mean, dreadful. I set myself one up, though. So I've been coding websites um, for over a decade it looked awful I bought a domain name called easy voiceover one so yeah easy voiceover.co.uk and I recorded at home I, I went out I bought a microphone so I invested in kit because I knew I had to I couldn't wait and go I'm gonna buy some kit when I earn money from voiceover no to earn money from voiceover I've got to buy some fucking kit so I bought some kit how do you do that with no voiceover experience prior because you're so good no I'll tell you I'll tell you what I did funny I took massive action um, it's exactly what I teach. This is, I'll tell you exactly how I did it. This is how I do everything in my life. Honest to God, it's how I do everything in my life. So what I did is I bought that kit initially. I was working a game at the time for £4.75 an hour, minimum wage, poor as shit. So nobody tell me, I can't afford this, I can't afford that, okay? There is a way to do it. I put some stuff on a credit card and just pay it. And then what I would do when I couldn't pay that credit card off, I'm not saying get into debt, guys, at all. Don't do this if you don't think you can handle it. And then was what they call a rate tart. When you got these other cards that said six months interest free on a balance transfer, I just fucking transfer it across. Pay the minimum every month. And then when that six months was up, transfer it across. 
So I went for like 18 months where I'd have zero interest on any of my balances. I'm not saying do that, but that's what I did, right? It was a risk, it was a gamble. I'm quite high risk in what I do. I'll talk about that in a second, Fanny. So I bought some kit, okay? I then taught myself how to use some free software to record voiceover from home because I didn't know how to do it, but I didn't use it as a bullshit excuse for why I couldn't do it. I typed into YouTube how to record voiceover at home for free. And it came up with quite a lot of YouTube tutorials. I went through all of the shit ones, found a good one, and I copied it. So I learned how to use a microphone and how microphones worked, how the patterns of microphones worked, how to compress my voice via software to make it sound better. Because every time you hear a voice, when I've done a voiceover, even if I'm just using a mic like this, I then process the audio a lot once I've, once I've recorded it. So it's not just straight out of the mic, I compress it and make it sound richer. But you're a geek, so somewhat easy for you. No, wasn't born a geek, Fanny. Limiting belief of yours. Absolute limiting belief. I don't buy it. I will slap you down. Um, I didn't know how to do it initially. I didn't know any of this stuff. I taught myself web development from scratch, Fanny. Because I didn't go to university for it. I went to university for acting. I did a Mickey Mouse degree, all right? <laughs> I didn't know how to do web development when I came out of uni. I sat down and through time, effort, commitment, capability came about through that. And I sat here while all my mates went out and got pissed. And all my mates started throwing their money away on shit. And I went, no, I might be earning minimum wage, but I'm going to invest it the best way that I can. So I bought some kit. I learned how to do that. So I created my own voice reel at home, first of all, before I even approached voiceover agents. Then I thought, because I thought I've got to think about out the box a little bit, how can I make myself sound better than I already was? So I recorded off the radio. And again, I'm not saying do this. This is just cheeky and what I did. I recorded six radio adverts off the radio through my computer and I chopped out the voiceover artist's voice and I used all the sound effects and all of the music and I put my own voice on top of it. I then sent that off along with my own voiceover clips to an agent and I was like, I've done these jobs, what do you think? They said, oh, we aren't taking anybody on at the moment, but thanks, we'll put you on file. I was like, oh, that's not good enough for me. I said, do you do any training courses? And they were like, well, actually, we do, knowing because of the person I am, if I could get in front of somebody, I could convince them to give me a chance. I knew I couldn't do it over email. I couldn't do it over the phone. But if I got in front of them, I could do something about it. So again, rather than going out and getting pissed, spending my minimum wage, I invested 150 quid on a one day, a half day voiceover workshop with my now agent, but wasn't at the time, when she was a tiny little agency as well, running out of the basement of her house in Chorlton in Manchester. And I went to that knowing that if I could get in front of her, I could convince her through passion that I had to give me a chance. And I said, look, I've done this reel. I'll pay you to do another reel. But if you get me one job, I will promise you and I will convince you that you should keep me on. Now, two weeks after that, I got a phone call and said, Ross, it's Mary Lou from the voiceover gallery. Comet at the time, I don't think Comet around anymore, Comet the electrical company, they've got a job here, it's a corporate job and it's called the Tower of Coaching. It's a massive corporate long boring job, okay, but I've said you will do it for free, they just have to pay for the studio time. And she said to me, they've booked three hours of studio time at whatever rate it was, if you can do this job in less than three hours by not making any mistakes, I'll give, you the, I'll give you the script beforehand. You go home, you mark it up, and it was like this, Fanny, it was fucking massive. Mark all the breaths up, where you're gonna breathe, all this kind of technical stuff you need to know in voiceover, and you can do it in a quicker time than they've booked. I will give you what's left over, money-wise. And I remember going in so prepared, I'm like, I'm gonna smash this job, because I spent two nights beforehand marking up all the scripts once I'd got home from my shit job at game. And I went into that booth, like I'd done it a hundred times before, even though I had now shit in myself, but I thought, I've got to convince everybody that I'm on form and this is what I do. I did that job and I got a phone call the same day, once I'd finished, from Mary Lou going, Ross, you did it in two hours and whatever, you earned yourself 35 quid. And I was like, oh my God. That's like a day's wages at game, doing something I actually quite enjoyed, and I did it in three hours. I would have had to work like eight hours at game minus tax for that money. 
And that was the little in that I had. And I was like, so I've proven to you that I could do it. When I sent you my reel initially, and you said, no, we're not taking anybody on, I didn't leave it there. Good man, I like that story a lot, says Fanny. Because I didn't want to accept no. Because I knew that I didn't have to. When a human being is the only thing between you and what you want, and their answer of yes or no is the only thing that is stopping you, and that applies to most everything in life. If it's not a mountain that stood between you, literally nature that you can't control, if it's just a human being who has to say yes, you can make it happen if you get off your ass and don't pity yourself and don't make excuses and dress fear up as practicality and go and waste your money on shit. So that's what I did. I got my voiceover agent. That was... 12 years ago. Today, I mean, and I worked at voiceover every single day of my life. When I wasn't working, I would be practicing it. When I was in the bath, I would be practicing voiceover by getting shampoo bottles and reading the bath like an advert, reading buses as I walked down the street, signs everywhere, boring my friends, making, doing their voicemails for them for free as a voiceover, okay? Worked as hard as I possibly could, just as much as I did in my acting career. And today, it's really paid off. Maybe I'm expecting too much for too little work. You probably are. What, what I think a lot of people do, Fanny, is they expect by taking action, they're gonna get results. And I know I, I always tell people to get results, you've gotta take massive action. It also comes down to taking specific action. And it also comes down to taking specific action at the right time. If you take the right action at the wrong time, it equals pain every single time. So you need to not just take massive action, but think about what action you are taking and whether it's the right time to take that action. If I'd have got in touch with her before I'd learned how to use a microphone at home, before I'd recorded my own stuff at home and kind of understood a bit about the technology behind the job, it wouldn't have worked out the way it did because I wouldn't have been as accomplished when I went to do that job. I wouldn't have been able to convince her by already turning up with a reel that I'd made for myself at home. That was of a really good standard because I taught myself through hours of YouTube how to do it. So I took the right action at the right time and it led to the right results. Today, I'm so ridiculously grateful. I, I landed a contract last week that will earn me two years worth of salary at game for 30 hours of work. Okay, I'm not saying that to go look at me, I'm amazing or oh, show off. But it's because I took the right action at the right time and said to the right results. I landed 52 episodes of an animation as well that I start in January because I went and took massive action to get into animation. And that's one for a whole other story. But I wanted to do kids' cartoons. I thought that's a great job to get paid great money for, to have a really good time. I had no idea how to get into it. It's not the same as voiceover, it's different. It's a bit more acting work, really, as opposed to voiceover. But I took action, massive, specific action. The, the, the right action at the right time to do that. And it's taken three years, you know, but I'm now at the point where I did 72 episodes of a Netflix animation last year called Whack Foo that you can get on Netflix. And I'm now gonna do 52 episodes of an animation where I am the lead character in it off the back of what I did last year. But it's because of the action. I wanna do children's illustrations. Yeah, awesome. So so Karen's a writer. Children's, yeah, children's books and children's illustrations. Uh, my mum keeps saying, you know, she's got such a creative mind when it comes to writing. She used to write all my school stories. You know, you're made to write a story at school. She would write <laughs> a bit cheating it. She would come up with the ideas for me and practically write it. And I'd just recopy it out of me and write it. And I used to get the best marks. And the teachers thought I was amazing at school for writing these kids' stories. And it's my mum. And I'm like, mum, you need to start publishing these, these books. And she's got these limiting beliefs about, oh, why would anyone buy my book? Why, how can I write it? My mum my can't see because of an eye condition that runs in my family. So she's like, I can't write the book. I'm like, mum, look, I, will, I bought her a dictaphone. I'm like, if you, if you dictate this book into the dictaphone, I will write it up for you. Or I will buy you a laptop that has voice recognition on it so you can just talk your book into the laptop. But she's still got some limiting beliefs behind, you know, whatever previous experience of, I can't do this, why would this work? So that's something that I, you know, I'm trying to push her to do. Get out of her comfort zone and do what she's not done in her life in order to have what she's never had in her life. Um, and it's the same with anything. Honestly, guys, if you want anything, it requires hard work, specific action, belief in yourself, and ultimately patience. Patience in equal amounts of hard work. Love it, Ross, says Hibster. So you found a way to get what you wanted. Honestly, but you can sigh as well. Everyone on this call can. 
it's not I keep saying it all the time I am absolutely not um, extraordinary in any way Siri on my iPhone was taking a, di a dictation of what I <laughs> was saying then <laughs> mental I think he was trying to write a book based on what I'm talking about um, but yeah there's you know all the people I know who are extraordinary Jeff who I keep talking about Jeff Walker Google him so I, I just I've never met a more authentic genuine guy who's got the success that he's got and it's just not not remotely affected him there's nothing extraordinary about Jeff he was a stay-at-home mom effectively his wife was going out to work a decade ago supporting the family and he was running an online business that wasn't successful at all he made a couple of changes committed to taking massive action today he's one of the greatest internet marketers to have ever lived and he's worth dozens and dozens and dozens of millions of pounds um, and yet he still impacts people so positively. He's just a great, he's just such a great guy to be around. You know, I talk about these battery chargers. He's like a battery charger. You spend 10 minutes talking to him and you just come away so motivated and so inspired. You need to find these people for yourself. Seek them out. Start taking action to find the people who are having more success than you and are in the industries that you want to be in. If you want to get into cartoons or, Karen, if you want to get into illustration, Find online the people in that industry. You've got to find them. Fanny says, where are they? You've got to do hard work. You've got to get on LinkedIn, search for groups. You know, look for the owner of that group on LinkedIn who is running a group about the thing that you want. Reach out to them and say, who are the key players in this group who I could potentially even pay to mentor me for a couple of weeks in the thing that I want to know a bit more about? Okay, I wanted to learn more about YouTube marketing and getting my videos out because I upload these periscopes to YouTube and they get about 150 viewers each. But I'm like, you know what? The stuff I put out on these could affect so many more people. So at LinkedIn.com, yeah, check it out, Gary. Yeah, we're so lucky to have the internet. You're exactly right, Bill. And I was like, I need to find a, a, a marketer on YouTube and how, you know, a guy who's crushing it with YouTube. And normally people go, oh, well, where do I find those? Or, you know, they're not going to speak to me if I do find them. Um, I got in touch with a friend who put me in touch with someone he knew was having success on YouTube. Uh, a guy called Nav, who is now a really good friend of mine. And his videos get 4 million hits a month and stuff on YouTube. He's got plaques all over his wall that YouTube give him when he hits 100,000 viewers and a million viewers and all this stuff. Um, and we set up Skype calls now. We had the first one last week and I'm going to do a lot more in these golden eight weeks of the year to set myself up for a lot more success on YouTube next year. And we're having Skype calls and I'm swapping my skills in high performance and mindset with his skills on marketing and video. Um, and we've created this little mastermind group together where we each give each other big value on these calls. You can do the same. It doesn't have to be money you're, you're exchanging with. You might have to offer that initially, but then if you've got other skills you can bring to the table, then suddenly money doesn't need to be you know, exchanged. Um, but you've got to find these people and there is a way, if you want it, you will find a way. If you don't, you will find a fucking excuse for why you can't have it. And that's what it comes down to. It's that, it's nothing more than that. If you want it, you'll find a way. If you don't really want it, and you need to get in touch with your why. If your why is not compelling enough, and everyone on the program on Bulletproof Factory is gonna find their why in unit four. And it's gonna be really, it can be incredibly emotional for people to go that deep. We do an exercise called Seven Levels Deep. When I ask you initially why you want to, you know, be an actor, Fanny, or anyone else on here, you'll probably give me some bullshit surface level excuse about, oh, I want to, I want to affect people, in, I want to tell stories and make people think about things that I tell through my stories in a different way. No, absolute bullshit. When you're on your ass, or you're, you know, the day where everything goes wrong, you lose your relationship, you go bankrupt, you lose your house, whatever it is, that reason he's nowhere near compelling enough to drag you out of that shit if I'm like look you've lost everything are you, how are you going to carry on acting oh well I've got to carry on because I want to make people think differently about the stories I'm telling bullshit you won't give a shit about that you need to get to the core and the real honest reasons for why you want to do what you do and when you find your why you find your way and you will have such a compelling reason where nothing will stop you from getting what you want because you know why you're doing it, you know, and you won't be that person who wakes up one day who realizes that they no longer have the time to do what they always wanted to do. You don't want to be that person. And that's the danger we all have if we don't get conscious and realize our mortality and realize time 
is ticking away. And that's why you get these next eight weeks and you can use them positively and you don't waste them or you can be like the sheep out there who are unhappy and they throw them away. Mostly because my only respite is in being someone else. Okay, well, I mean, that, that's quite a common that's quite a common thing people say. But Fanny, I would say to you then, if we were doing this exercise, why is it important for you to be someone else? And you would go to a different place. And then when you give me that answer, I would say, okay, why is it important for that? And we would get to the core of why it's important. Because I don't like myself. So, okay, so I go, okay, well, why don't you like yourself? And we keep going, and a lot of people, I've only done this in public three times, but every person has had to get up from the table and walk out <laughs> to the toilet because they've got emotional, not walk out on me. Because um, it will take you to places that you don't want to go. And it, but, it, but you've got to face it if you want to get over it. And you want to really deal with it, otherwise you're going to spend the rest of your life running away from whatever that thing is. But I promise you, when you get you know, through that exercise and you go to, it's called seven levels deep, because for most people it takes seven whys. For a lot of other people, it's taken 14, 15, where we finally got to the crux of the matter. But when you finally get to that place, it's liberating. You know who you are and why you are doing what you are doing. You know, and that is like so empowering. And then you eventually end up with, I get people in Bodyproof Actor to, to write out a life story. This is mine. And you'll have that. I won't share that now because it's for the, it's for the, I don't want to ruin the program. But I get people to write that out. Read it, says Fanny, and um, and yeah, and you will write your own, and it will be a very compelling, limitless life story for yourself that you will live for the rest of your life, and you will no longer, if you practice that, go back to that old bullshit that you might be living right now. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's all comes down to that, your why. And when you we lose your why, you'll lose your way. Know your why, you'll know your way. Um, it's very, very powerful, but it takes work. It takes months of work, and you'll be tweaking that why probably as well as you go through your life. You'll be tweaking your life story as you go through your life. You will never, or you should never, want to sell with you know just what you have or just the impact you are making. You should always, to the day you die, want more, not just for yourself, but for everyone around you, those people you love, those people you don't even know who you might be impacting. Um, so yeah, you know, we got a bit deep there, haven't we? But it's just, you know, some people need to be aware of there will be a day when you wake up and you no longer have the time to do what you've always wanted to do because you put it off and you procrastinated and procrastinated and procrastinated and made excuses about how you can't do it or how you're not seeing any results. And even though I'm taking all this action, but I'm not seeing any results, oh, I'm going to give up. No, look at the action you're taking. And if it's not working, we just need to change it. It's simple. And we need to take specific action at the right time and you'll start seeing results, I promise you, because I see it in all areas of my life I apply it to. I don't always see results week on week. I'll have weeks where it all goes wrong, but then I learn from those lessons, those outcomes. There are no failures. One of the lessons you first learn on Bulletproof Acts in here, I make everybody sign this declaration in unit one, and it says there are um, no failures, only outcomes. If I learn something, I am succeeding, and I truly stand by that. As long as you are learning, you are succeeding. Life happens for me not to me, um, you know, I create my own responsibility, my own, sorry, I create my own reality, and I'm responsible for what I create, you are, quit playing the victim, you know, you can play the victim for the rest of your life, but ultimately no one gives a shit, it's just the harsh reality of it, you either, you know, stop complaining about what you wish could happen, and you start adapting to the situation and making it happen, you know, because it's, you know, and I get it, it's really easy to say all this when life is going well, but life hasn't always gone well for me. You know, there's definitely issues in my life that are gonna cause problems in the future. I'm losing my eyesight, that's gonna get harder as I get through life. Um, but I can sit and complain about a situation and how I wish it was different, or I can adapt to it now and start building a life that's gonna set me up to make it a lot easier if my sight, you know, well it will, my sight will deteriorate. Um, but I don't know what might change in the future, what science might be able to achieve, how people can help me. But there's no point in just fucking around now, throwing it away. You know, be grateful for everything you've got now and start using it to your best ability. You know, I said to Bill on the phone before, um, your body is the only thing you're ever gonna own. Everything else you think you have, I think I own this, I don't own this. This could be taken off me anytime, anytime. Anyone could come and take that off me. I own this. People can abuse this and, and you know and take it 
the advantage of it or whatever, but no one can take this away from me. This is my body. It's the only thing I'm ever, ever going to own in my life. It's the most incredible piece of machinery I've ever been blessed with. Somebody, somewhere, something loved me enough to give me a beating heart that beats a thousand, a hundred thousand times a day and keeps me alive. Okay. It's incredible. And yet so many people don't realize it, don't, don't appreciate it, abuse it, throw it away. My friend, I spoke to Bill before, an acquaintance of mine, 28 years old, abuses his body massively. He had a heart attack last week at 28 years old. It's just so sad because it was so unavoidable. I mean, so avoidable. It wasn't unavoidable. It was absolutely avoidable. But he didn't appreciate what he had. Now he does because he nearly lost it all at 28. You know, you've got no excuse, guys, no matter what, who you are, what you're in, what situation, you have no excuse. If you are alive and you are feeling pain right now, don't feel sorry for yourself because you still have time on the clock to make it better. If you weren't feeling that pain, you need to worry about yourself because you'd be dead, all right? So if you are feeling pain right now, celebrate that because you have time left on the clock to do something about it. If you quit complaining, you step up in life instead of sitting back, and you, uh, you put that specific action into place. So that's a little bit of another salty rant, but I'm passionate about it. I hope it served you well in whatever capacity. I don't mean it to be harsh. It's just a reality, isn't it? It's just a reality. This is what you need to do in order to have what you've never had before. Um, love the rant, says Fanny. Well, thank you. Um, I hope it's not put everybody to sleep. Bradshaw's laughing. Um, but thank you for showing up tonight, guys. Appreciate you all. And thanks for everybody who has invested in me and the Bulletproof Factor program. I will not let you down. I will over deliver. I will give you, because this is, this is one of these as well. I live by this as well, guys. I'm gonna read you one more. Thank you, Ross, it's funny, pleasure. One more of these is, um, it says, I will give more of myself to others than anyone expects. And I live by that. I truly believe, guys, if you help other people get everything they want out of their life, you will receive everything you want out of your life. So uh, let's start helping each other. Um, so I'll see you guys on Wednesday night for the webinar, okay? I might do a Facebook Live video tomorrow night if people have got questions about Bulletproof Factor. I'll probably just set that up in the Facebook group um, and we'll just have a chat if people have got any questions. If they haven't, it'll probably be about two minutes long. If they have, we might stay on for uh, an hour or whatever. Um, but then Wednesday night, yeah, I'm going to do the uh, the webinar. I'm going to put details of that in the Facebook group. Uh, if you're watching on the replay, chances are you might have missed it, depending on when I upload this replay. Uh, but I hope the rest of the material you've heard in this scope has been valuable to you. Um, so thank you. Appreciate you all. Uh, let me know what you're doing in the Facebook group. If stuff's uh, going great, let us know what, you, what you're after. I've always got questions, says Fanny. Brilliant. Well, you can bring those. If you've got any questions about the program or anything else, you bring your questions tomorrow night. We'll do a Facebook Live video. Probably... Um, I don't know, between seven and eight, something like that. I missed that internet cut out. What did you miss, Miss Gypsy? Um, I was talking about the webinar on Wednesday night. Oh no, tomorrow night I'm gonna do a Facebook Live video for people who've got questions about the Bulletproof Factor program. Um, you've already signed up, Karen, so I'm guessing all your questions were answered, but if people are sat on the fence or they've got anything that's blocking them from maybe signing up, they're thinking about it, but they're not sure, and I can alleviate any of their uh, you know, obstacles, that's stopping them from committing and you know and, and stepping up and you know committing to guaranteeing themselves success effectively, then I will answer all those questions tomorrow night, no problem. And people can email me anytime, Ross at bulletprooffactor.com. Um, but thank you. Go and get some sleep. I'm gonna do the same now. What is it? It's gone 10. For those who are in a high performance, guys, get yourself in bed by half 10, get yourself up at six. It's plenty of sleep, it's enough sleep, absolutely scientifically proven, more than enough sleep. Um, and uh, yeah, make the most of tomorrow. Let's go smash it. Pleasure, Simon. Thank you for investing in the program. Appreciate you. Uh, thanks to everybody. And I'll um, yeah, I'll see you guys on the uh, Facebook Live tomorrow night or on the webinar on Wednesday. Pleasure. Um, take care. Thanks, Helen. Thanks for uh, for showing up. Appreciate you. And uh, yeah, I'll catch up with you guys soon. Go and uh, go and do something great. <laughs> All right. No excuses. Remember, if you want it, you'll find a way. If you don't, you'll find an excuse. Go find your way. Bye for now.